Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the adaptive advantages of hemoglobin. In this video we're going to cover the next stop point, which is all about technologies we use to measure oxygen saturation and carbon dioxide concentrations in blood. I'll read the actual dot point. It says students will analyze information from secondary sources to identify current technologies that allow measurement of oxygen saturation and carbon dioxide concentration in blood and describe and explain the conditions under which these technologies are used. So a couple of different ones, different things in this dot point. First, we have to be able to identify current technologies that are used to allow the measurement of oxygen saturation and carbon dioxide concentration. That was task number one. But we also have to be able to describe and explain the conditions under which these technologies are used. Before we start, I'll quickly talk about this oxygen saturation and these carbon dioxide concentrations, what that actually kind of means. So first, what you can imagine is in our blood, we have two scenarios. One scenario where oxygen saturation is normal, and one scenario where oxygen saturation is too low. So what that means, more or less, is just how much oxygen is in our, in our blood. So here we have, you can see we have one, two, three, four. We've got the four of these theoretical oxygen particles swimming around in our blood. And then obviously we have lots of them in our red blood cells as well. We have hemoglobin, which are these green dots here. So these ones were hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. And then within the hemoglobins, we have these ion groups, which were these orangey parts. But to the ion groups, we have oxygen attached. So here we have each hemoglobin has four O2 molecules. So here we could say, okay, now we have everything saturated. We have lots of O2 in our blood, and we have every all of our hemoglobin have four O2 molecules attached in our red blood cells. That's normal, but what happens if it's too low? Well, here we have just two in our blood. So here we have two O2 molecules, and in our actual hemoglobin, we only have two O2 molecules as opposed to four. So here we have, let's say, 50% saturation. So 50% of our normal levels is what we have here. And this would obviously really be actually really bad. This would be pretty much death because remember what needs oxygen? Our cells need oxygen to live, to, to produce ATP. So in this case, we would be dead if we have such low saturation in terms of oxygen. That's why we want to have a technology to be able to measure it, to make sure we, we're healthy. Now, carbon dioxide concentrations, again, you imagine this is here our normal concentrations. So we can see we have maybe, let's say, two molecules of CO2 in our blood, and this would maybe be normal. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We've got 12 molecules of CO2. And remember, connection with CO2 and pH is the more CO2 we have in our blood, usually the higher our pH. Or sorry, actually the lower our pH. So low, lower pH, that means our blood is acidic. So if we have too high CO2 levels in our blood, that means it's going to have a low pH. And that would also mean that we're going to suffer because our pH is too low, our, our blood is too acidic. So we want to have make sure we have a way that we can measure these carbon dioxide concentrations because having a too low or too, a too high pH is bad. And now what also would this indicate? This would indicate, for example, if we have not enough oxygen in our body, that might mean we have a problem with our breathing system, so our respiratory system, because maybe our lungs aren't working. So maybe our lungs aren't effectively getting our oxygen in, which is why we have low oxygen levels. So it tells us about our lung function as well, so lung function. And same thing with our carbon dioxide. One of the reasons why we might have too much carbon dioxide in our body is because we're not exhaling all that carbon dioxide. So if we have too much, again, that might hint that, that maybe there's a problem with our lung function. So these are all reasons why we want to make sure we have some way of being able to detect what's going on. Because if, if we know how much oxygen and carbon dioxide is in a person, then we can tell if he's actually feeling quite well and quite healthy. And now I'll go for the actual point. First, I'll cover the actual technologies. And the first one was called the pulse oximeter. So you actually need to remember these names because it says identify current technologies. These are the two technologies. We have the pulse oximeter 
And you might have seen this before. This is when someone has one of those clips on their fingers, like here. And what actually is happening is it's measuring two things. It's measuring our, the oxygen saturation levels, so how much oxygen is in the blood. And it's also measuring its pulse rate. That's very similar to the heart rate, not quite, but similar to the heart rates. So it's kind of having a scope of how good the heart is working and how much oxygen is in our actual system. So that helps us to check if our lungs are working properly and if our circulatory system is also working properly. And that's one technology. The other technology was the arterial blood gas analysis. And what it does, it measures oxygen saturation, so it does that same as pulse oximeter. But on top of that, it also measures carbon dioxide concentrations blood pH, and bicarbon ions. And I'll go over those quickly in, in as well in a quick bit of detail. But how this works is you actually have to take a patient's blood. So you take a blood sample, take blood sample, and then you have to put it into one of these machines. This is a blood gas analysis machine, this here. That is the blood gas analysis machine. And what you can imagine is once this blood is actually in that system, what's going to happen is you're going to have these molecules. The red ones are meant to be hydrogen ions, and this is basically our pH. So the more of these we have, the, the lower our pH. We have got these blue ones, which are oxygen molecules, these gray ones, which are carbon dioxide molecules, and all these things are the things we're testing with this machine. Because what happens is we've got our, here our blood gas analysis probe, and when these flow past, they will actually move, and they will move into the probe, and once I've actually moved into the probe, we can see how much is in there, and that's how we get our reading. Oops, and that didn't work. Um, but now we know how much is in our probe, and then we can check, okay, how much carbon dioxide do we have in here, how much oxygen do we have in here, and how many of these red hydrogen carbon ions do we have in here, and that's, that's how we can tell if we have a low pH or, or if we have low oxygen levels or low carbon dioxide levels. And with this, how this works is there's actually a, for the pulse oximeter, how that works, there's light which gets emitted by one of these actual uh, pulse oximeters, and then that light penetrates the blood and hits one of these detection thingies. It just sort of like a, just helps to detect, but it can actually detect what color the blood is. So in this case, we have hemoglobin which is full of blood here, and when it's full of blood and it's full of oxygen, so when these hemoglobins are full of oxygen, it has that red color, which is why I drew it red. Whereas if it's less, if it doesn't have much oxygen, this has four molecules of oxygen, whereas this one only has one oxygen molecule. So this one is low oxygen saturation. And you can see the hemoglobin is actually blue because it has low so it's blue when it's low and it's red when it's high. And this pulse oximeter can detect the colors of the hemoglobin. So that's how it can tell us if our oxygen saturation is low or high. If the colors of hemoglobin in our blood is red, that means it's going to have high oxygen levels. If it's blue, that means it's going to have low oxygen saturation levels. So I've done the, more or less the first part. We still have to be able to describe and explain the conditions under which these technologies are used. That's what I'll do next. So where are these used? So with pulse oximeters, these are often used in hospital settings. So for example, if you go for any surgery, if you're not feeling too well and you go to hospital, you might be given one of those clips. If you have asthma as well, and you have an asthma attack and you go to hospital, you get one of these clips on you. And this is sort of, if nothing's too serious, you get one of these clips on you because the good thing is they can tell you how much, how your oxygen saturation levels are. So a good way of yeah, telling you how, how well your lungs are functioning. And if suddenly this drops and the nurses know something's going going wrong, then they can go to the next level, which is the arterial black black gas analysis. So where is the pulse oximeter used? Sort of hospital and early detection. So nothing too serious, no emergencies, but just if they want to monitor you and make sure that nothing's too problematic, then use a pulse oximeter. And as soon as something, as soon as they might feel that there's a bit more of a problem, so for example, emergencies, or so emergencies, or if someone has like major breathing problems, so big breathing problems, then they would use the other one because they would use a blood gas analysis after afterwards. So they, because the reason why is because they get the oxygen levels, but they also get other things. They get carbon dioxide levels, 
which again tells someone it, how low or how high their pH is. If it's too low, that means their body would be failing. And maybe if it's an emergency, the person can't tell them because they might be unconscious. But using this blood gas analysis, even if they can't tell them that they're feeling really, really, really bad, the blood gas analysis, the results of that would tell them. And these bicarbon ions, they tell them how well their kidney is functioning. So they tell the doctors how well their kidneys are functioning. So in an emergency or in a situation which is quite critical, they, use a, they get a probe, so they actually have to get blood from the patient, and they put it in one of these trial blood gas analysis machines. But overall, in early monitoring, and if you're just you know, going to hospital and you're not feeling too well, or you know you're before surgery, you get one of these pulse oximeters on you. So hopefully that was useful, but you have to be able to remember these two different uh, technologies and be able to describe and explain where they're used. So describe would mean, okay, they're going to be used in early detection, that's description, and explain would be, okay, they're going to be used in early detection because it's easy to do, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to be able to get any blood from you, and it'll give you some detail in terms of how you're feeling by getting your oxygen saturation levels and your pulse oxygen rate, but if it's too serious, you go for the arterial blood gas analysis because you get more detail. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.